A lot of people ask me, how do I generate direct RF or microwave signals with my arbitrary waveform generator without using IQ mixer and local oscillator? In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do that. The setup is as follows. I have Jupyter Notepad here, and this is where I'm going to develop the various scenarios. I have a Proteus arbitrary waveform transceiver here, and then I have a spectrum analyzer over here. And this is where we're going to look at most of the measurement results. I'm generating a 75 megahertz Gaussian pulse using the arbitrary waveform generator. I'm also using our A10120 amplifier here, which is a 30 dBm maximum output amplifier and goes all the way up to 20 gigahertz. So very useful for these type of microwave measurements that we're doing with an arbitrary waveform generator. The first thing I want to do is change the span of the spectrum analyzer to full span. So this is a 13 gigahertz spectrum analyzer. So the sweep we see going across there is all the way up to 13.5 gigahertz I believe. Right at this side we can see the 75 megahertz fundamental frequency that I created but also because our clock frequency is set to one giga sample per second I get plus or minus 75 megahertz at 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz, and so on. And these are our Nyquist bands. One thing I can do is say, well, why don't we use it in the fourth Nyquist zone? So let me just tune it to 4 gigahertz, and you can see we have a faithful reproduction of the pulse. Now, what Nyquist, the Nyquist theory tells us, and how these things perform, is that the amplitude rolls off. The higher the Nyquist zone you get, the more amplitude roll off. And that usually follows a sine x over x function, of, as I've explained in, in different videos. So you can see the amplitude is quite low. Let's put the spectrum analyzer back in full span. One of the things that the Proteus Arbitrary Waveform fam generator family have is a very wide output filter, 9 gigahertz. So this is one of the reasons why we see all these different spectral components going all the way up to 9, 10, 11 gigahertz. So the roll off is not just sine x over x, it's actually the roll off of filter that we are observing as well. Now, if we just want to generate a really pure 75 megahertz signal or maybe 100 megahertz, 200 megahertz, depending on the quantum system that we're trying to generate signals for, the bandwidth of that system may be wide enough to allow some of these components to creep in, thus creating some distortion. So one way to do that is to decrease the filter size, but then we would lose all our opportunity to create signals in the higher Nyquist zones. Uh, but if I use the interpolator and switch that on, now you can see I've used a 4 by 4 interpolator, so our clock is now at 4 gigasamples per second effectively. I still have the signal down here at 75 megahertz. I have a very clean three and a half gigahertz before we hit this this guy here, which is four giga samples. And then finally up here at eight giga samples, I can see a, a, a clock frequency down there in the center. I have the plus and minus 75 megahertz. This of course is a useful way of improving the fidelity of a baseband signal. But what I really want to do is generate signals directly to RF with my arbitrary waveform generator so I don't have to bother with IQ modulators or IF mixers and local oscillators. So I'm going to build a new waveform now, which is an IQ waveform, so it doesn't contain just magnitude points like my previous waveform. I'm going to download that to the instrument looks distorted now because the instrument is still expecting magnitude only. I'm going to put by 8 interpolation on, still looks distorted. And now finally I'm going to turn on the digital up converter of the Proteus arbitrary waveform generator. I've tuned the center frequency of the arbitrary waveform generator to 3.6 gigahertz. And so what we see here is our 75 megahertz original Gaussian pulse now modulated on a 3.6 gigahertz carrier. Here is clock minus the 3.6, here is clock plus 3.6, and here is two times clock minus the 3.6. So if I just wheel the marker around here, you can see we've got a pretty nice signal here at around 12 gigs, 12.8 gigs, 12.9 gigs, 13 gigs. And then we have a signal here at 11. And then scrolling all the way down, this is the signal that we're interested in. And don't forget we've got the bandwidth or the span set of this spectrum analyzer to 13 gigahertz. So that's the signal that we're interested in at around uh, 3.7, 3.6 gigahertz minus, of course, the 75 megahertz that we're modulating it with. Let's zoom in on some of those. So 
let's change our center frequency to 3.12 and you can see the the modulated pulse there looks good amplitude is is excellent we haven't seen much of an amplitude degradation by using the the digital up converter so this is in essence is in the first Nyquist zone of the instrument we can go higher to the next Nyquist zone 4.875 gigahertz and finally just for kicks let's take it all the way up to 11.25 gigahertz and see what kind of pulse we get again the amplitude is pretty good of course the fidelity is is fantastic because this this pulse is made out of thousands and thousands of, of points so it's a very good way to create signals at different frequencies all the way up into the x-band if you want but we know in quantum physics experiments we're kind of looking at between three and four or two and four and then for the control and then for the measurement maybe uh, seven or eight gigahertz so this is Proteus using the digital up converter feature I've also talked about the interpolator feature that we've got in it and also I showed you how you can use it as a, as a regular arbitrary waveform generator and take advantage of some of the, the multiple Nyquist zones. So thanks a lot. Check out our website, taborelectronics.com and I hope to see you in the next video.